Hello, my name's Alice and I'm Research and Documentation Assistant for Archaeology at Hull and East Riding Museum. And today we're taking a look at the Islamic Art Collection, which has a lot of pottery objects from across Iran and Syria. Um, in particular, today we are going to be looking at four bowls um, which were originally made in Nishapur and these were bought by Hull Museums in 1964 at a Sotheby's auction. Now, all of the bowls are from Nishapur, which is a city in northeastern Iran, and they're products of the Samanid dynasty that ruled over the city during the 10th century AD. Now, at this time, this city was a really important cultural centre um, for pottery production, and this was due to the development of slip painting, where you mix liquid clay with coloured pigment um, and then paint the design onto the pottery surface. And this just means that the design tends to stay where you put it um, during the firing process. And it allowed potters to create bold and coloured patterned designs. And then after the design was applied, it would then be covered with a thin, transparent, clear lead glaze. So Nishapur was on a major trading route known as the Silk Road and the pottery was traded along this route. So pottery made in Nishapur has been found in Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, and also Uzbekistan. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at some of the objects in our collection. This bowl has been decorated with a browny, blacky colored slip. The presence of chrome in the dark pigment caused the clear glaze to stain yellow, making the different shades of yellow inside the bowl. It's got a sawtooth pattern border by the rim and underneath there's a band of pseudo calligraphy, which means that it looks like writing. It copies the style of Kufic Arabic, where the letters are angular with long horizontal lines and rectangular forms. If you look at the bottom of the bowl, you can just see a four leafed floral motif or cross like form. It's possible that this pattern originates from a pattern of four grape leaves. There's a similar pattern on an earlier bowl from Susa in southwest Iran, which dates to the 9th century. There are also cross-like motifs on bowls from Nishapur that are similar to the floral one on this bowl. The same cross-like image also appears in a 9th century Greek and Arabic text from Sinai. Inside the bowl, there are marks which show where a tripod would have been placed when the bowl was fired. These marks show that the bowl had kiln furniture paste, placed inside it, which allowed another bowl to be stacked on top of this one when it was in the kiln. So let's just move on to our next bowl. So taking a closer look at this one, we can see that it's decorated with white, black, yellow and green slips. The inside has four sections and the same decoration has been used in opposite quarters. The outside is decorated with a quartered circle and a vertical coloured stripes. Now, as you can see, this third bowl has been covered in a white slip and decorated with a black slip. The black pigment has a brownish tinge, which suggests that it was made with iron. The black decoration is written Arabic. Now this type of decoration is known as black on white wear and was used on pottery in all the important cities in the Eastern Islamic Empire from the 9th century to the 11th century AD. The use of written Arabic is significant. After the Arab conquest in the 7th century AD, Arabic script became dominant throughout Muslim states such as the Persian Empire. This was because the Quran the main religious text of Islam, was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad in Arabic. So Arabic became important in all aspects of life. The Arabic writing on pottery is calligraphy, which means it's an artistic style of writing. So letters were modified to make them look nicer and make them kind of fit with the design a bit better. So often this means that letters can't actually be read or understood because they don't actually look necessarily anything like the word or the letter they were intended to look like. Um, so for example, letters might be written backwards or maybe there are certain marks on there which shouldn't be there. 
it's also possible that the people making the pots were also not able to read or write Arabic. They were copying the look of the writing or the shape of the word um, to make it look similar to a popular saying. This can make it really difficult for archaeologists and historians to work out what these markings represent or maybe what word it's supposed to be. Um, however, it's possible that this was exactly the same at the time the pots were being produced um, where people buying them, people selling them actually weren't 100% sure what they said. It wasn't necessarily meant to read exactly like something. Um, so, However, we do know some popular sayings that were clearly marked on bowls from this time period. Um, so phrases like baraka, meaning blessing, yum, meaning happiness, and a typical phrase used on pottery from Nishapur in particular is ahmad, meaning um, may he do that which is praiseworthy. So we'll now move to our final and fourth bowl. Now this bowl has a yellow background with irregular shapes outlined in brown and filled with a cross hatched or crisscross pattern. There are also thick green vertical dashes covering the inside of the bowl. On the outside there are brown vertical lines or claw shapes coming down from the rim. Similar decoration has been seen on other bowls found in Nishapur. So if you've enjoyed watching this video today, all about our pottery from Nishapur, then how about exploring some of the other content we have here at Hull Museums?